Elta Company presents Diet Challenge, a reality project in which the participants with a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes challenge themselves to reach their set goals despite their serious condition. If not now, when then? A six months transformation process. Come on! Regular workouts, managing sugars and emotions, daily activity reports. If you master this management process, there will be no complications. The first three months are under the supervision of an endocrinologist, a psychologist and a trainer. I must do what I am told. Stage two, three months of independent work without the experts. At some point, you realize that this is the right way. Real solutions, real victories. A reality project about the lives of people with diabetes. We challenged ourselves. Have you? Today is the 10th group meeting at the Diet Challenge Cottage. There are still two weeks left until the end of stage one and its results. However, each expert already has their own favorite participant. My pick goes to Dina and Olya. Veronika is also close to her goal. Dasha also has reached a pretty good result when it comes to her compensation. For me, I could also include Nastya, since she has always completed her exercises. She was never lazy and never cheated. Did it work? No. However, knowing how she treated her diet, I had to cross her out from my favorites. Whose child is this? Young body, she could have progressed much faster, if only she had the right meal plan. It took us two months to get her off chocolate, candies and other junk. Or, for example, 800-900 calories for breakfast. I don't even eat that much. You had an omelette, a cucumber, bread and prunes for dinner. Did Plishova tell you to have prunes in the evening? Glucose level at 17. Okay, what's wrong with prunes? They're full of carbs. When Nastya Martinyuk arrived at the project, she had little knowledge of a balanced diet and her diabetes. She was decompensated. Good day, Anastasia. Have a seat. Any good news? With sugars, if you compare what I have now with that of before, it's quite a big leap forward, since it was very different not too long ago. I had really bad spikes from 5 to 25. I tried to monitor them, but I had no idea how to manage my diabetes, to adjust my eating habits or to keep pauses. Things like super bolus and basil, all these things were foreign concepts to me. Anastasia's glycated hemoglobin at the beginning of the project was at 7, with the morning glucose level of 9.1, frequent hypoglycemia. Further, after our second analysis, her glycated was at 7.8. Any other endocrinologist would be saying, oh god, I'm doing something wrong. No need to panic here, these sugars are different. Anastasia is experiencing hypo less and less. Her sugars are much better, both postprandial and on an empty stomach. Look at your pump settings. What is your target set to on an empty stomach? 5.5, 6, and your sensitivity coefficient? 2.5, also my daily dosages dropped by about 30 units. I know that they went down, and they will continue to drop Nesta. She's probably just now beginning to grow up. She would always procrastinate, saying she would do it later. Now everything is different. I am motivated and I have the drive. I am feeling much better, even down to the little things. My face has changed. My chubby cheeks are gone. My hair feels thicker and it doesn't fall out as much. My body is also changing. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I say, oh wow, that's really me? I can't even recognize myself sometimes. I have yet to hit the limit or arrive at my perfect self. But I know that it will happen. Now stretch out. There, good. 
Ole Shukina was eight months pregnant when she came on the Diet Challenge show. She joined the challenge at the first group meeting, right after having her baby. The results are clear. We can also see it in her continuous diabetes compensation. Ole truly got a hold of herself. She began to take her training more seriously and pay closer attention to her carbs. Of course, she was serious before, but now she doesn't miss a thing. Olya was diagnosed with diabetes when we were already together. We lived through it. Just like her, I was learning about diabetes. He's wonderful. He provided great support. My hospital mates would straight up tell me that he would leave me. I would spend most of my time in a chair next to the elevator. People would come and go, and I would just sit there waiting for him to come every time to visit, that he would not leave me all by myself, and of course, he would come every time. Ole's husband, Vladislav, also supported her coming onto the project. Every Sunday, he and little Alessia let their mom go to the cottage for group meetings. She fully understands that I will take care of everything. She can spend some time on herself. We have frozen pumped milk and infant formula. Lots of food. We're okay. After Alessia falls asleep, Vladislav will watch his wife on the targeted hormone show. The host of the show is actually Anastasia Plishova. This is Lyudmila Ibrahimova. She's also an endocrinologist. She was the one who looked after Olya during her pregnancy. Hello, my dear guests. Okay, let's start with a few myths. Myth number one, which our patients feel strongly about, has to do with type 1 diabetes being passed on to their children, leaving them afraid of becoming parents. I personally did not have those fears. At any rate, even if the baby does end up having diabetes, firstly, the parent is diabetic, so it will be easier to teach their child how to take care of their illness. Secondly, when you bring a child into this world, you are giving them an opportunity to live, to see all of the world's beauty, to travel, to self-realize. Even if it's difficult, I think the pros overweigh the cons. A future mom with diabetes has a 3-5% to chance of having a baby with diabetes, which is not high, while the father has a 6% chance. Also, not that high. Of course, if both parents have diabetes, the chance does go up to 25-30%. However, it is still not 100%. The factors that pushed me to come onto the project was the fact that my husband also had diabetes. When the question of starting a family came up, I began my online forum search for more information, trying to find families where both parents were diabetic, but had healthy kids, looking for older children in order to figure out the odds of a child becoming ill. There was no such information available. It was thought to be impossible. I did find two families, where both the parents were diabetic and had a couple of older children. The older one was about 10 and the younger was 6. I wrote to them and decided right there that I would have my baby. Everything went great, and the baby is fine. Quite often, diabetic moms are terrified of the thought of their children having diabetes. They begin to measure their sugars and really go crazy over it. How many times do you think I checked my son? How many? God is my witness. I would think it over hundreds of times. But in the five years, I checked him no more than twice. There's no point in bugging your kid just because of your worries, while you're also winding yourself up. The child will act sluggish with high glucose. It will be easy to spot. And if they're energetic, 
Yes, Lena, she's right. If you keep checking a healthy child for diabetes, they might get it purely out of stress. Three of the Diet Challenge participants have children. Yelena Varankina, Dmitry Shevkunov, and Olga Shukina. And just last week, Veronika Gergibiani announced of her pregnancy. My husband and I spoke of this a while back, and we thought we were ready and planned for everything. When I actually realized that I was pregnant, it was like I hit a brick wall. I just sat there for an hour without saying or doing anything, trying to gather that it is all really happening to me. My husband's reaction was much better than mine was. I think it's all in people's heads. Oh, diabetes, what about the children? What about you? Is it sexually transmitted? Veronika's main three goals on the project are to rid herself of her fear of motherhood, her food addiction, and her extra kilograms. Her weight loss slowed down due to obvious reasons. I don't know, to me, there's no better body than a pregnant body. She can lose weight after the baby. Olya is a great example of that. With every new training session, I focus more on the inside. Not only am I toning up physically, but also emotionally. That idea only drives me forward. I told Alexei that we need a tougher training plan. This is the last time. So five, five, four, three, two. I don't know how she does it all. Her workouts, self-control, fantastic meal diary reports, weight loss, and she finds time for the baby. Ludmila, tell us, was Olya a good student? And how did she resolve her pregnancy issues? Olya is a straight-A student. She sets an example of how to prepare for pregnancy. How to keep a pregnancy diary. Whenever Olya would come to her appointment, she would have everything laid out. She would point to the problems that she was experiencing. She always analyzed her notes. She's a chemist, no wonder. That's how it should be. We would plan together. We achieved the target glycated hemoglobin level. What was it, Olya? 5.6? Okay, then the next question is for Olya. How was your pregnancy? Were there things that you were not prepared for? In terms of planning, I did everything by the book. I knew that I would experience changes in my sensitivity to insulin. The only thing that I was not ready for was how insulin would behave in my third trimester. I was actually beginning to panic. I thought, dear God, I injected so much insulin for a single piece of bread, and it's not working. Other times, I could not bring my sugar below 8. Insulin was not working. I injected a whole day's dose, and it's not working. Even though I understood things in theory, there were times when I would ask the doctor of what to do next. It's very important for the doctor to let me know that these things do happen and not to worry. Everything okay with your milk? I did notice that the milk was not affected by what I ate, but by how long I slept, and what you drank, and your rest, and water. The more I sleep, the more milk there is. Of course, you get the proper rest. I realized that I can also be tired. I thought that I would ride the adrenaline wave all through the project. The fatigue did accumulate. I am tired physically. Plus the sleepless nights of a new mom. Emotionally as well. There's so much to manage now. At the beginning of the project, Olya's glycated hemoglobin was at 5.8. Later on, her readings were much better. She was prone to hypoepisodes. We remember well when she had them. She would mainly experience hypos during her long walks with the baby. While out, she would often have to eat something as she would go into repeated hypo episodes. During our process of working together, we tried to get away from hypos and to adjust her meals. Her nutrition was not very good, and her ultimate goal was to lose weight after all. Her glycated hemoglobin is rising halfway through the project, as we understand it is due to the fact that there are fewer hypos. Now her glycated hemoglobin is at 6.4. Hello. Yes, hello, take a seat. 
Your glycated hemoglobin was at 7.5 and now is at 6.9. My sugars are still terrible. I saw. Nura's situation is a difficult one. She was late coming onto the project, and that was the time when everyone just started. She missed that time, but she's trying. At first, I got the wrong impression of Nura. I thought she came on the show just to promote herself. I did not want Nura to be on the show at first. However, after talking with her and getting to know her on the project, I have since changed my mind about her. Come on, Nura! She's one of the only participants that texts me. Even if I tell her that I'm busy, I will get back to her later, she still writes to me. I can see that she needs this. In the last week, I found out that I can do a burpee with push-ups. 50 times in a row without dying. Nura Sharikova's goals consist of a good physical form and diabetes compensation, which she works on with an endocrinologist and a trainer. Nura had no questions for the project psychologist. We began to figure things out, to look for a goal. Because how can you have no goal? Are you on the project? Yes. Got your resources? Yes. To use them with purpose? Yes. Will we use them? Yes. But for what? I don't even know how to answer that question. I have yet to find any issues like that within myself. In my opinion, we discussed the most diverse topics with the three participants. Olya Shukina, Veronika and Daria. Come on, Dasha! She's quite motivated and I like that very much. Daria came to us with a 7.9 glycated hemoglobin, but this was with frequent hypoglycemia and glucose jumps in the blood. Then she brought her glycated hemoglobin down to 6.3. However, that implies even more hypos. It's also a psychological component because of her eye operation. At the medical examination that was held during the Diet Challenge project, Dasha was diagnosed with retinopathy, a macrovascular diabetes complication. Prolonged decompensation of the disease affected her eyes. This is simply the ramifications of me not taking care of myself for many years. I was telling myself that it would not be painful. Actually, it really wasn't. The only thing is that I never came across anything like this. It's always scary when something has to be done with your eyes. Of course, it must be understood that with prolonged diabetes decompensation and glucose spikes, it's possible to sometimes get lucky. Let's not be under the illusion that all of our participants were lucky. There are complications. We can truly see how Dmitri has changed after he stabilized his sugars. We will not discuss what is caused by high glucose levels and those roller coaster drops. But in my opinion, even now it is obvious that Dmitri is different. Hello, Dmitri, come in. How are you doing? Dmitri's glycated hemoglobin was at 6.1 at the beginning of the project, but the glucose level in his blood was at 15.9 at the start of the project. Midpoint his glycated hemoglobin is still at 6.1, but this one is completely different. Dmitry Shevkunov, with a 27-year diabetic experience, did not know how to count bread units. And in just two and a half months, he has gone from complete decompensation to normal glycemic levels. How do you feel overall? Lately, I'm very happy with my glucose levels, not counting some rare occasions. I'm happy that I rarely see my glucose at 15. The weight? Yes, my weight kind of stagnated. How much now? My scale shows 66 kilos. Take off your shoes and get on our scale. 68 kilos. We never measured your waist. Breathe in. You got abs already. 
Electric shock therapy? Sure. As you don't behave yourself. Oh, you got yourself some pregnant pants. I can't wear my old ones anymore. They push up against my belly. Too tight. Stole Ole's pair. Well, they look good. When we first met, before the project, Veronika's glycated hemoglobin was a 7.9. Further, we see a 6.2. That is a true result. No spikes. When I arrived at the project, my glycated hemoglobin was a 7.8. Quite high, actually. Anastasia told me that we should not do an extreme drop since it would affect my vessel system. So I set the target of 7. And I got to it. Now we set the target a bit lower. My glucose level prior to the project was 20, 28. Jumped all over. And I had hypos. Now I don't experience anything like that. Everything is stable. Tresiba is smoother, as I gather. More comfortable and straight. It works smoother. We need to lower it, lower, lower. I have a request. We need to lower it, but look. You have 6.4 8.30 p.m. You inject how you should. You ate at 9 p.m. and kept a half an hour pause. What did you eat? We don't know what you went into the night with. I don't know where the 6.8 glucose level came from. It is probably from this here. My request is that if it's possible to remove this right here, these carbs. Because I didn't eat anything here from lunchtime until the end of the day. You constantly have carbs in the evening. Look, she lost about 4 kilos during the project. For me, out of all the participants of the project, I believe this one to be the most highly resourceful and high potential participant here. A person who can get the most results in terms of their psychological state. We are left with Dina. There is no need to talk about insulin therapy or compensation when it comes to Dina. It's self-explanatory. Everyone already knows that she was compensated way before the show. She continued her compensation during the project. We can precisely pinpoint those moments. We could touch on her glycated hemoglobin, but I don't think it would get us anywhere. At the start, her hemoglobin was a 5. It raised a bit at mid-project to 5.8. There were some hiccups. Dina had a few serious issues. Firstly, her nutrition was atrocious, and we fixed that for her as well as increased her exercise amount. Dina Dominova set two definite goals for herself on the Diet Challenge project. One, to stop hiding her diabetes from others. She came on the project with this readiness. Thank God everything turned out as it did. Goal number two, to lose weight by cutting calories and increased workouts. Excessive exercise is just as bad for losing weight as the lack thereof. She would stress herself out so much that her body had enough, was not losing weight. On top of that, pushing herself so hard and cutting calories, she was under eating. At first, she never ate after training. She would resist for the longest time until she gave in under our pressure and began to lose weight. Before, your body fat percentage was at 19.8. Now it's right in the middle at 13. Fitness standard, according to fat percentage classification. Dina Dominova, Yelena Varankina, Veronika Gyargabiani, Dmitry Shevkunov, Anastasia Martinyuk, Nyura Sharikova, Daria Sanina, Olga Shukina. We challenged ourselves. Have you? This is the diet challenge. See you in a week.